really coming down now. Look at that. It's just a couple of minutes, it seems, and uh, the porch here is covered. Nice size flakes. So, snow is nothing new for uh, people here in North America, but for uh, Taiwanese friends, something a little new. There's our snowman. I'll have to go out, go back out there and, and do some more uh, running in the snow and and show you what it looks like. But there was no way I could take off my glove and operate this cell phone because it is cold out there. It was it's probably freezing or just above freezing. In fact, I had this up on my face, and of course my breath made it wet, and the bottom actually froze. It was frozen stiff. I've been in my house about two minutes now and it's it's now thawed out but it was it was crisp so I started off slow about 12 minute miles and got them under nine I ran in is about two inches or less and I try to run on the fresh stuff or other footprints that I saw you gotta really be careful of ice patches and you probably don't want to go too fast on inclines or declines but on the flats it was it was actually quite nice you know my foot hitting the the uh, crunchy snow. Living so many years on a tropical island, I don't get to run in snow too often. So it's it's great to be back in the states and um, be. I don't I don't care what kind of weather it is. I'm going to get out there and and get my runs in. Feel great. At 44 degrees, this is actually the warmest we've had uh, so far on our United States vacation trip here. So I'm going to take advantage of this and go out. I don't even need my scarf. Hey, my fuel source is going to be dried Mediterranean apricots here. So I'm just going to put a few of these in a Ziploc bag. Okay, it looks like our path is, is clear. And I'm going to try for 10 miles today at least. There's a couple ice patches I see. Probably worse when I get into the woods where it, it would be a shaded area on either side of what I'm showing you. So there's woods that way and there's woods that way which follows a creek. It's quite beautiful. Up here pretty soon I'm going to show you the uh, one of the Crayola buildings if you're familiar with Crayola crayons. Uh, so I did about five miles and I'm walking right now. I'll take a break. I took a swig of water. I'm going to take some apricots and uh, I don't want the camera to jump around too much, so I'm walking here. A question that you might ask, if, especially if you're one of my students in Taiwan, is am I cold? Because <laughs> I'm not even wearing a jacket. It's 40 degrees Fahrenheit. You can do the calculations to centigrade Celsius. But uh, what I do is in the first mile or so, if it's colder than this, and I will run in colder than this under 32 degrees, which is zero, Celsius I will run in you know negative numbers but I'll wear another jacket and after the warm-up I'll peel that off and throw that at my doorstep and uh, when I'm warm when my body temperature is up then uh, you know I'll just go out and do my run when I know that I'm sufficiently warm but I'm always gonna cover my my ears that's one of the points and then if it's under zero I'm gonna wear a scarf a very thin scarf and I'll show you that later Here's one of the obstacles I have to deal with. But I'm not running on ice patches. I'm actually running on packing snow. Now, the Eskimos have like, you know, a hundred or a thousand words for different kinds of snow. And this is a good snow to run on. I don't know if you can hear that crunching of my feet. So I'm not slipping at all. I'm, I'm compacting the snow. It's uh. I did five miles like running in the sand, you know how it's, it's a different footing. So I'm sure that my five miles is equivalent to something more than that as far as the effort that I'm putting into. But check out this building here. This is the Crayola Crayon. One of the buildings of their, their, their factories. So I actually go through their parking lot and then uh, continue with my trail. I didn't see anybody on this, this leg yet. That's why I can talk to myself here. <laughs> I 
By the way, I want to mention about my feet. My feet are not uh, are not cold, and they don't even feel wet. So, yeah, I don't have to run in boots. I I wouldn't run if the if the snow was you know over my ankles. That would be very difficult. I tried it the other day, <laughs> but uh, I don't want to get my sneakers wet. That's just asking for trouble. This is something that I picked up at a bicycle shop in Taiwan. So it's basically a kind of a cylinder of scarf. Put it over your head like this. I can put it over my mouth. It's really saved me outside in the snow. Uh, also, you can put it over your head like that. You can make a pirate's hat. Let me show you how to do that. So you take your arm and put it through this side. And you take your other arm and put it through this side. And you pull. So you have kind of like a knot there. And then this part goes over your head. Here. So you got the pirate hat. Okay. You can also double it up. So put it like this and then you take one twist and then put it down over top like that actually it's inside out so there you go a lot of uses for this thing so it's uh, breathable also it's uh, good to keep the, the dust off if I'm if you're riding next to or running next to cars in Taiwan. So I'm going to keep one in the States and one in Taiwan, but, and the one in Taiwan will be basically for uh, hopefully keeping large particles of pollution out of my lungs. Uh, I know it's, it's not entirely possible, but every little bit helps, right? Okay, I have mashed the prickly pear to, to a pulp, and I have kind of a strainer here, so I'll see how much juice I can get out of this. Two prickly pears, and that's all the juice that I could yield. So what you really need is a, uh, a blender, a Vitamix to pulverize those seeds. I'm going to add a, just, just a little bit of water and, and drink that up. 